When I say the old Egypt, what comes to your mind? The pyramids, the Nile, an ancient and rich civilization that have been for the span of thousands of years. But Egypt is a country with many contradictions and challenges. Today, I want to talk about Egypt and Masr, two words that refer to the same country, but have completely different meaning to the people that live inside of it. The two words are used interchangeably to refer to the country based on the language. But the truth is, this is not the case. In the last couple of years, a lot of Egyptians start to make videos on the internet. They start to refer to the rich parts of Egypt as Egypt and the poor parts as Masr. People who dress in a certain way are referred to people as al Masriin. But other people, they are the people from Egypt. People who got the opportunity and the chance to live life as they want. People who have the good jobs, but people in Masr is the people who are in the lower classes who survive to live. All this had took place in the last 30 years. But in this video, I want to discuss the implementations that the people start to suffer from because of that. How the people became divided, even in their ideological views about Egypt itself. What is Egypt? But we are not here to discuss the linguistic part of the name. We are here to discuss how Egyptians today start to use the two words to refer to the people that live inside the country. In the past couple of years, there was a trend on TikTok that starts to refer to people who live in nice areas, have nice cars, and dress well, are the Egyptians. Why people who are marginalized doesn't have the enough opportunity to live are the people who are Egyptians. And this started to appear to me, I started to ask myself, what happened the last couple of years that had took the country to that certain way? And for me, it is pretty obvious. If you go to a certain places inside the country, you'd see people dress differently. You would see people speak differently. They start to use more English in their in their words, while the people who are in certain places doesn't do so. People dress completely different. They have completely different views about Egypt themselves, even if it is Arab or it is Egyptian or Kemetian, and as a lot of people start to refer to the country. But how all this had happened? In my opinion, it happened about 30 years ago. How the city was designed, cities within the country that was designed, I think in a very wrong way, that starts to differentiate between people that live inside the same country. In the past, if you look at the map and you start to see, for instance, Cairo, Greater Cairo, you'd see it is completely squished up in a certain place. That makes rich and poor live in the same areas and live in the same proximity, make them have interchangeably connect with each other. So what happened was, there was a plan in 1970 and the time of President Sadat that decided to build seven settlements that surrounds Greater Cairo for people who doesn't do financially well and people who live in slums. So by this, they will be diminish the slums and send those people from inside Greater Cairo to those settlements so they would develop Greater Cairo and people will live better. But that didn't happen. The project stopped for about 15 years until Mubarak's time, and he decided to basically switch, switch the design. The design was meant for the poor people to go and live there for new settlements, for, for them to build the new opportunities, so he decided to make it for the rich. And from there, we start to have the settlement Sheikh Zayed, the outside the rich parts of Cairo and Giza today, that was in the historical parts and the old towns, but in the new cities. Basically, the suburbs become the rich parts of Egypt. So, what is the implementations of this? How this affected the people that live here? This thing starts to become clear in a very sort of factors, such as the dress. For men, it is exactly the same. Men in all of Egypt still wear the same clothes. It's not a big difference. Of course, the financial level differ between what brand or what material they dress, but in reality, they all wear the same clothes, the same t-shirts and pants. But for women, this starts to become a little bit tricky. A lot of Egyptians today faces a discrimination but from another part. It's basically wearing hijab, where the majority of the people there are Muslims. But surprisingly speaking, here in Egypt, a huge number of women are being discriminated because they wear hijab. And all of the women that is discriminated, surprisingly speaking, happens in Egypt, basically the rich parts of the country. There's a lot of places that refuses women that wear hijab to go. There was an investigation from the BBC Arabic that stated that there was over 11 out of 15 avenues that refused women who wear hijab to go there. Surprisingly speaking, these places were restaurants, bars, hotels, private compounds, they refused them. There was a woman that wanted to buy a house in a private compound, but it was refused just because they asked her husband, does she wear hijab? And he said, yes. Basically, she got refused to buy out of no reason. And they said because of the image of the place. There is the devil in the detail, the image. What 
image exact the image of classes that's the only word because on the other side big part of the population just wear hijab for cultural reasons and that's not the case on the other for the people who got money it's not like that it became that as basically wearing hijab start to de define you as being from a lower class because most of the women that came from lower classes wear it mostly i don't mean all of them and not all the case of course for women who got money of course a lot of them wear it i think the investigation that bbc did it was such a beautiful investigation that i highly recommend you to watch it the other thing is that i think is pretty obvious right now if i go to certain places and i don't mean private places i mean specific areas in egypt i know how people would wear if you go to any part of egypt that is financially not doing well you would see most of the women wearing a certain way wearing an abaya and hammock hijab it's not that case for all the women there, but I would say the vast majority of them do so. And this takes us to the second problem, the identity crisis, or be more specific, a dilemma that we live in right now. For most of Egypt history, it was clear to us that we are Arabs. We are proud of being Arabs. See TVs, pride us of being Arabs, songs being written of us Arabs. And there was no word or any way that people were describing us as Kemetians. You would say, what is Kemetians is, basically is the old Egypt that starts to appear in the last couple of years in cartoons and some movies that start to appear to us as we are the Kemetians. I would say this is a completely new word for a lot of Egyptians that start to hear. And a lot of people start to tend and to like the idea of us being basically Kemetians, the old Egyptian, and start to separate Egypt and Musk from that term. Most of the people who live in still poor parts of Egypt still have this, still being proud of being Arabs. That's not the case in Egypt. There start to become a trend of us being the proud committee and people who came, who built this ancient civilization. And even this starts in the last couple of years, a talk about the e Egyptian DNA. This, this is all a new things that had took place in the last couple of years. And that even came to the second point. People in the rich parts of Egypt are more westernized than people who are living the most of Egypt. And they came from a very obvious reason. Most of these people went to international schools. That's not the case for most of Egyptians that studied in the national schools, normal schools that live there. And this, of course, affects their beliefs and their identity somehow. I think in Egypt is a story of a lot of countries that has the problem of classism. And this, on the long run, starts to build up completely different ideas about how people should live and how people should wear. It starts to become, I would say, such a two different countries within the country. I'm not with or against, but I'm showing you a part of life, a part of peep story that people are living. I hope you like the video. If you like it, please subscribe. Thank you. See you later.